I've had the Steam Deck for a few months now and it's very quickly become my main way to game. And I'm not someone who's typically been a big PC gamer. But the fact of the matter is that PC gaming comes with a lot of unique benefits. There's ownership and customizability for how you want to play, a wealth of games readily available on various storefronts, and now, with the Steam Deck, the option to take every benefit of PC gaming on the go. Many folks are still newly getting their hands on the Steam Deck since these things are selling out like rap artists gone pop. So if you're planning on getting one, just got yours delivered, or are curious about what the Steam Deck could do for you, I got you covered. Welcome to youtube.com slash Blessing Junior. I'm Blessing Junior, and today I want to talk about the Steam Deck and some of the tips and tricks on how to get the most out of this thing. Obviously, games are the most important aspect to a game's platform, and expanding my games library was my number one priority upon getting my Steam Deck. My Steam library is probably more barren than most, given I spend the bulk of my time on PlayStation and Switch, so my first hours on the deck felt super limited. There are three things that really helped me expand my library. Number one, emulation. Just like a regular PC, you have Project 64, Dolphin, and more available to you to play your favorite classic games. And the Steam Deck community has actually made it easy with automated scripts you can find online that organize your emulation libraries with custom art. Really, all you need is Emu Deck, Steam ROM Manager, your ROMs, and your BIOS, and you're all good. And let me tell you, there's nothing like playing Street Fighter 3 Third Strike on the go, at least not until Street Fighter 6 comes out and I'm playing that on my Steam Deck. Number two, Xbox Game Pass. This does take a tiny bit of effort to set up, but with the help of this official guide from Microsoft, I was able to make it happen. Now, this is Xbox Game Pass via the Cloud Gaming Beta, but even still, with the monthly subscription, you can get access to a bunch of games you don't even have to download to play. And so many of these games run smoothly. You even have the option for some games to put away the Steam Deck after a session and pick up right from where you left off on an Xbox or PC with the power of the cloud. I know it gets annoying to hear about how Game Pass is the best deal in gaming, but after playing Amori, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Forza Horizon without even having to click download, I gotta say, it's a pretty damn good deal. Number three, experiment. I've been having fun exploring the Steam store for indies and demos of games that look interesting. The Steam Deck is a great way to play smaller games on the go, but beyond that, the Steam Deck offers designations on games that are Steam Deck approved by Valve, meaning they're guaranteed to work on the device. Here's the thing, F the Steam Deck approved designation. What I found is that most games work for the most part. Just because Valve hasn't gotten around to approving something that is in your library doesn't mean you should count it out. I was shocked that a game like GTA 4 that boots up via the Rockstar Games launcher worked super smooth on my Steam Deck. Not to mention Neon White worked pre-launch when I was playing it for review, and other games like Knockout City, which is an EA Play title, worked just fine. A surprising amount of games work on the Steam Deck. Now, not every game is gonna make it. I was really hyped to try the quarry, and even though it technically works, it ran pretty badly and wasn't worth playing on the Steam Deck. But any game is at least worth the try. Segwaying out of games and into hardware for a second, a must get for the Steam Deck is a USB hub, specifically one that doesn't just have USB ports, but HDMI and even Ethernet as well. Valve is currently working on a dock for the device, but there are plenty of devices you can get right now. The one I currently have is the Anchor USB-C Hub 7-in-1, which comes with a USB-C port so I can use it and charge at the same time, an HDMI port so I can connect my Steam Deck to my TV at any time, which I'll get to in a second, and regular USB ports for if I want to connect a thumb drive, keyboard, mouse, or anything else. That stuff is vital, especially for when you want to use the deck in desktop mode to set up emulators, launchers, or anything else. Speaking of the HDMI port, play on your TV. Now obviously, games aren't going to look as pretty, and if you have a PC setup that allows you to play on your television already, ignore me. But if you're like me, and have your PC at your desk and at your desk only, having a hub with an HDMI basically turns your Steam Deck into a super switch. You can connect multiple controllers, play local multiplayer with your friends, or even play emulated stuff on your TV in better resolution than you did back in the day. Ironically, playing off my TV is one of my favorite things to do with my Steam Deck. My Steam Deck is a 256GB model. No matter what model you get, I think it's worth expanding your storage. I got an SD card with about 200GB of storage, and it's it's very necessary, especially if you're playing AAA games on this thing. One of my favorite things about the Steam Deck is the control setup. You have the standard buttons, triggers, and sticks, but accompanying those are two trackpads, gyro control, and back paddles. Experimenting with different control inputs has been vital for really separating my Steam Deck experience from any other device I own, whether it's using my back paddles for brakes and turbo in Burnout 3, or turning on gyro for neon white. If you have a Steam Deck, this is a must do. The Steam Deck also comes with a community layout feature where you can see and try out what others are using as controller layouts for games you're playing. It surprisingly helped me out a bunch. My biggest qualm currently with the Steam Deck is the battery life. Thankfully, I spent most of my time playing this thing at home, but even then, while playing a power intensive game like Death Stranding, my battery was draining every couple hours. That's okay while at home, but while you're traveling with the Steam Deck, it's worth messing around with the settings to see how you can conserve battery. Adjust brightness, frame rate limiting, and whatever else you need by hitting this three dot button. I forget this button is even on the hardware sometimes, but trust me, it might be the thing to keep your Steam Deck alive on a flight. 
On a final note, the Steam Deck is really cool and really impressive, but it's also a brand new piece of hardware. It comes with a lot of quirks to get used to. Understanding some of the weird bugs that pop up can help smoothen out the experience. Sometimes I have to force close games or not go into rest mode on other games at the risk that the buttons don't work for some reason upon turning it back on. Sometimes I have to close the game to get the correct playtime. There's quite a bit of this. None of it is terrible, but it's for sure noticeable. These are the realities of having a new platform early, but the nice thing is that Valve seems to be dishing out updates fairly quickly. That said, I don't have enough good things to say about the Steam Deck. I hope some of those tips help you out whether you're just getting a Steam Deck or deciding whether or not you want to buy one. Until next time, if you liked the video, hit like and subscribe. I'm looking to make more videos on this channel in my free time, so let me know what kind of stuff you'd want me to break down here. Until next time, peace out.